Some people will try to tell you all that matters is your perception. Those are generally the people who are trying to control your perception. They are also the ones who are clinging most desperately to their delusions. The delusion that we have somehow made it through the worst phase of the crisis, or that even if we did not recover, recovery is on the way. That we still have a little bit more time left, or the most prevalent delusion, that the entire world system could not disappear virtually overnight. But it is not a matter of negotiating for a later date or finding a safe place to hide, like the famous story of the German man who saw the inevitability of World War II packed up and moved to the obscure island of Guadalcanal. As they used to tell Jonas, there's no hiding place down here. The point is that we are at the end of the system and the greatest social upheaval within the United States since Pearl Harbor Day 1941 is what is determining political reality now. This is a mass strike, typified by people responding now to their sense of the near future breakdown of society, or more precisely, the breakdown of the entire world monetary financial system. The way we are going to pull back from this breakdown crisis is through bold, creative solutions that overturn the assumptions of the previous failed system, and those assumptions that still prevail in the very high-ranking idiots we call them official idiots, PhDs, or certified idiots. Otherwise, take the lesson from 20 years ago, when expert and official opinion failed, and the mass strike heralded the end of one world system, and now the other shoe is about to drop. Throughout the summer of 1989, hundreds of thousands of East Germans made their way out of the DDR through Czechoslovakia and Hungary to escape to the West. A young woman who was 28 when she successfully made it into West Germany recalled that the reason she and her family wanted to leave was because of the political and economic situation. It's a depressing feeling, she said, when you see that nothing changes in your country. In contradiction to all the promises, everything is falsehood and deceit. It began in the summer, but by the beginning of September, the disunited protests of the previous months came together. There were Monday demonstrations in Leipzig and other demonstrations throughout the Eastern Bloc despite the crackdown on protest leaders by the secret police. The people were out in numbers, bolder than before. In Leipzig, 10,000, then 20,000, then 40,000 protesters filled the streets, demanding their freedom of speech and the right to travel west. German Chancellor candidate Helga Zeppler-Rusch, who played a critical role during this period, reflected on the situation that in history, sometimes people will endure conditions for a long time, and objectively you have a reason to revolt, but instead you endure. Then a seemingly minor aspect brings the thing to explosion. So while the economic conditions became worse and worse, and it was clear that the DDR was hopelessly bankrupt, the issue that kindled the whole thing was a people demanding we want to travel to the West. Sometimes it happens that way in history and the demonstrations continued to swell. Meanwhile, like Belshazzar, DDR head Eric Honecker failed to read the writing on the wall. On October 6, 1989, Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev made a visit to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the DDR. During the trip, the protests in Leipzig and Dresden surged, with 20,000 in the streets in both cities, and the police violently tried to put them down. Honecker greeted Gorbachev with a kiss when they met. The delusion was thick at the celebrations where Honecker praised the DDR, exclaiming that socialism is a future because it has brought about social change and gives hope, and that the state was created to do everything possible for the well-being of the people and a future peace. It was reported that only weeks before he was forced to resign and weeks before the DDR fell, Honecker was still saying that the Berlin Wall would stand for another 100 years. The mass strike in East Germany was unstoppable. Hundreds of thousands now took to the streets chanting, Wer sind das Volk? We are the people. And on November 9, 1989, the government of the DDR was brought down with the Berlin Wall, and the Soviet system followed shortly after. Of course, Things have become much worse since then. Germany was not reunified as a sovereign nation, 
But under British direction, continental Europe at large was brought into an imperial mass known as the Euro system. With our Cold War adversary gone and in the process of being systematically looted, the United States was encouraged to deindustrialize even further. We outsourced work from our own high capital intensity, high technology producers to cheap labor, drawing down both our economy, the value of the producer nation's labor, and the overall productive potential of the planet as a whole. We stopped producing for ourselves. Russia stopped producing for themselves. Europe, South America, Asia, we became globalized. We were in debt. And as nothing changed, it became worse year on year. So today, the only thing holding together the globalized world monetary system, balancing on the mass of fictitious debt attached to the US dollar, is a delusion of the system that the recovery is underway and the monetary system will somehow hold together. For how long? 100 years? What the so-called official leaders of society have failed to acknowledge is a deep historical cultural current in the United States population that hates those injustices carried out on behalf of the monetary system, that system of usury that co-ops governments to do its bidding. Today is with the German population in 1989. The American citizens have been woken up to act on the deepest cultural currents in our nation, not some opinion or issue, but on behalf of what we know to be the most sacred human rights. In his September 8th webcast, Lyndon LaRouche repeated that we are now headed for a crisis unseen in mankind's history that is about to break out on a global scale. The people are saying, no, they don't want this. They want out of this system. And they are a power which is greater than any combination of elected representatives. And if you try to defy them, you will find that they will speak because even more than their lives, the very meaning of their lives is being disgraced. And we Americans will lay down our lives for the meaning of our lives. So you can say goodbye to your delusions or else a failure to act in response to the mass uprising in the American population will doom you. And the failure of this system on a global scale will doom humanity.